Hello. Students in my creative coding class are working to create poetry by writing Python scripts that will process a text file and produce a poem as an output. This is a video where I'm going to try to do just that by working with an existing poem and using it as a template to create a new poem. So I've got a Python notebook already set up and I'm going to work on it through this video and I will link to that Python notebook in the description of this video. This is kind of a sequel to a couple of other videos I've already done. Uh, for example, using text blob. In fact, I need to switch out my Chiron here. There we go. And uh, so now you can see this here. And, and I've kind of got this halfway done. And I'm going to work through it now and hopefully get it completed in this video. I'm not sure how long it'll take, but hopefully not too long because I think I figured out the hard parts of it. And um, yeah, let's take a look. So I've, I've got links to the existing the, to the to the notebooks I already did and there's videos to go with those and I'll try to link to those in the description as well and what I do in the the text blob video is I show how to import text blob and there's kind of several steps to it I've already completed those steps here so this is just some code that if you run all these four lines then that'll get text blob imported kind of our our muse for this project is Charles Hartman and so I've got a quote from him there about randomness and here I am opening a file which I did in the first video that I recorded today and this is the file that I've been working with for whatever reason called birdsofaustralia.txt that I got from gutenberg.org. I show how to do those different steps in other videos. And here I'm uh, blobifying it. I'm turning that file into a text blob called bird blob. Now let me make sure I have the file here. I do, yep, birdsofaustralia.txt. So I can run this and should work and it does. Yep, there's no uh, output yet other than NLTK reporting that it has everything it needs. But bird blob is done, like bird blob has been processed, uh, the, the text has been processed by a text blob and it's been transformed into a bird blob. So now I can do different things with it. I'm just kind of picturing what would a blob of birds look like. Uh, so the poem I want to work with is called This Is Just to Say by William, William Carlos Williams. It's one of my favorites. I like his poetry a lot because of how it focuses on specific moments by juxtaposing images sometimes in, in ways that seem mundane or trivial at first. Uh, there's usually not like a hidden secret meaning that you need to unpack. Uh, it's just about visiting this moment and thinking about moments like it. Um, you know, I haven't written someone a note about having eaten their plums before, but I've left people little notes before, and this puts me in a place where I'm kind of thinking about that, uh, that idea, like what it's like to be in a relationship with someone where you write little notes like this. And that's the suggestion of the poet, I think. So here I've read it in as a variable. I added a little bit of punctuation to help text blob parse it, uh, but this is otherwise the same poem. And I, I started off with three quote marks here and I ended with three quote marks here, so that lets me write it on multiple lines, but text blob isn't gonna care about the multiple lines. Uh, Python does though, so that's why I wrote it that way. Uh, you know, just copy, uh, copy this if you want to. If you are working on your own poem with this same textbook, uh, te this same Python notebook, then you should uh, put your own poem here that you want to work with. It could be something else. I'd recommend something short. Um, William Carlos Williams has plenty of examples. Let's put them in here. And then this is going to be uh, blobified as well, just like the Birds of Australia was blog blobified. And there we go. So that's how it is. So poem text is the variable that I've created, and then that gets blobified into poem blob. All right. So ultimately, my goal is to create a new poem, and I've already got this started kind of where instead of printing every word from this is just to say it's going to replace some of these words with a random word selected from birds of australia however i want to make sure that it puts words in the right place so it's not just a random word it's the right part of speech so instead of plums perhaps it's some other plural noun instead of delicious it's some other adjective so to do that i want to get some lists i want to get some lists of all of the nouns all of the adjectives all of yeah, that's probably, that's, that's probably it. <laughs> all the nouns, all the adjectives. And uh, then I'll be able to select random examples from each of those lists that I can plug into this new poem that I'm creating. So let's start this out. I'm going to make a list of nouns and I'll initialize it first by just saying noun list equals and then square brackets. Now that means it's an empty list and I can add things to it, which is what I'll be doing. But I need to make it first. So I'm gonna I'll make it here. Uh, I'll also make a, uh, you know what? I'll make a single singular no, I won't, I won't even call this list. I'll say singular, singular nouns, and I'll say plural nouns, initialize it the same way, and then I'll say adjectives. That should be good enough for now. Now, if you remember, I have this birds of Australia on this blob here, bird blob. So I'm gonna work with bird blob 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each word in bird blob, and if I ask for the tagged words, it's going to give those back not as a list of words, but as a list of tagged words, which has two parts. It has the word, and then it has the tag, and these are separated in a data structure called a tuple, and I can get both parts of that and treat them both separately with a little shorthand here in, uh, in Python. So I'm going to say for word, comma, POS, and these are temp temporary labels that I'm using for each item in that tagged word list. Uh, so I'm saying for, for word POS in bird blob dot, not bob, bird blob dot tags. And this is a little shorthand. If, you, if you're not following what I'm saying, then just copy it and it'll work. Um, so for word POS in word and part of speech in bird blob tags, I'm interested in figuring out which part of speech a particular word is, and if it's one of the things I'm looking for, I'm going to add it to the list in question. So I know already what some of these are, so I'm going to do, if part of speech, and then POS is what I am you know mean by part of speech, so if POS equals, and then NN, two Ns like that, that's going to be a noun. So I'm going to say, if I found that, I'm going to add that to my singular nouns list. And to do that, I've already got the list created, so I use the append function. So it's singular nouns dot append, and then I'm going to add the word, right? Because remember, each for each loop of these, I'm going to have two things. I'm going to have the word, and I'm going to have the part of speech. And so I just stick it on there like that. So I'm just making sure I'm still recording. Good. Okay. Um, then I also I know about uh, plural nouns. I want to treat those differently, so I'm going to put those on their own list. Um, let me do that. Yes, yeah, it's S, right? Um, so you have N and S. There is a, you can look these up on Wikipedia, um, the list of all the different part of speech tags. They're hard to remember for me. Like they, some of them are pretty obvious, but some of them are, are not. <laughs> so that's uh, that should be singular nouns and plural nouns. I'll obviously I'll double check this once I get this working. Um, and then uh, for adjectives, those are JJ. So I'm going to add those to my adjectives list. OK, so once again, now I've got three conditions. I'm working through each item in the tags list, and I've got three different conditions where if the condition is true, something's going to happen. So if that part of speech is a noun, then add that word to the, part, to the singular nouns list. If that part of speech is a plural noun, add it to this other thing. And if the part of speech is an adjective, add it to this thing. So at the end of this, all three of these lists should have some content on them. And we can check that, but let's just run it first and see what happens. Sometimes this takes a few seconds. It's doing some work. And yeah, okay, that works. Now, I'm not going to rerun this cell because that took a little bit of processing. I'm going to make a new cell now, but this new cell knows these things. So let's see if we can figure out, uh, let's just see how long these things are. I'm going to do that by using the length function. So lin, singular nouns, and 10,000. Okay, that's a lot. Um, let's try Let's try plural nouns. Okay, not as many. That's, that's all right. That's good. Let's see about adjectives. 6,000. Okay, so there's you know, a fair amount. Uh, quite a lot of singular nouns. Um, I should say that the part of speech tagger is not perfect, and sometimes just because of the ambiguities of language or inconsistencies in typing, all kinds of reasons, it's going to be inaccurate sometimes. Um, but I, I now have three pretty big lists that I can do something with, and that's, that's great. Uh, now, let's, see, let's try to practice what we're going to be doing when we generate a poem. Early on, I imported random, as you can see here, and got this quote from Charles Hartman. So random, you can do a lot of things with random, and probably the quickest way to get a random word out of a list of words is to use the choice function. So you can actually just say random.choice and let's ask it to give us a random adjective from that list. And sulfur crested, that's a good one. <laughs> let's see what else we get. Uh, white, okay, it's a color. Uh, apical, what is that? I don't know if that's a real word or part of a word. Lengthened, few. Majestic. Okay, these are good. So, uh, well, and then just an, an empty square bracket. <laughs> okay, that's not a good choice. That's not a great one, but uh, hopefully there's enough other good stuff in here that most of the time we pick actual things. And it looks like that's probably the case. That's an awkward one, but that'll probably work. Okay, let's try, let's try the plural nouns, and let's run this a few times and see what we get. Feathers. Makes sense for a book about birds. Toes. Also 
reasonable eggs. Secondaries, mm, terms, these are great. Yeah, these, these seem, birds, of course. Yeah, this seems to be working. Abdomen, that's, that's not really plural. So, um, you know, what you're seeing is that the, just the rules for what determines plurality in English are kind of inconsistent. And so that's partly what you see here. Um, okay, good enough. All right, now that we've got that, the ability to pull out a random one of these things, we can probably just plug it into this template. And I say template here, but what I've done is I went ahead and uh, I printed each line separately. So there's a separate print statement from each, for each line that'll make it easier for us to plug things into it. Uh, probably a more elegant way would be to actually make this into a template and then plug these into different places within the template with a function. Um, but I think this is, a, this is more straightforward and it will accomplish the same thing. So let's figure out a place that we want to change something. Uh, so this is just to say I have eaten the, let's change plums into something else. So instead of plums here, I'm going to delete that and then I'm going to concatenate this print statement with a random, um, like I did before, a random plural noun. Okay, so this cell should run everything else like the original poem and I took the punctuation back out to match uh, Willing Carlos Williams uh, version. So. Now it says, this is just to say, I have eaten the birds that were in the icebox. You know, probably uh, among the plural nouns on this list, birds probably is the most common for a book called Birds of Australia. I've eaten the parts that were in the icebox. I have eaten the primaries that were in the icebox. I've eaten the species that were in the icebox. Okay, so not too bad. Uh, now let's try changing out the icebox. Let's put these in somewhere else. So let's say plus random choice. Uh, singular. Now, it's the other nice thing about working with this poem, by the way, is it doesn't rhyme, and that's okay. And it's, it adds an extra layer of work if we want to try to make sure that words rhyme. Like, we have to make sure that we're generating a list of rhyming words and then only select from those. It's a lot, it's a lot more structure to add to this. There is a way to do it, but um, this kind of means that we don't have to. Uh, I've eaten the species that were in the vol. I don't know what that means. I've eaten the individuals that were in the native. It's weird. Uh, I've eaten the illustrations that were in the Luctuosa. All right. Uh, I have eaten the webs that were in the Lowland. Okay, that one at least makes sense, kind of. Uh, so that's something. Uh, I, I like that. Um, okay, so let me see. I actually have a typo there. So let's see. Now we've got delicious, sweet, and cold as adjectives. And I love this poem, by the way, for ending on these adjectives, like for helping us think about what it is to experience this. Um, this is a person sharing his attempting to convey his experience of the plums to his partner or wife or whoever whoever's plums he stole right he's saying you know i feel bad about this but you know here's what you missed out on um sort of sweet and sort of mean and, and the kind of thing that you i don't know that you find yourself doing sometimes okay so we're going to just stick this in here like we did with the other examples so it's just random dot choice and then in parentheses adjectives so let's do the same thing. I've got that on the clipboard now, just with control C. Um, just need one plus sign there. And let's see, does he end on a period? He does not, okay, good. So I'll take that out. There we go, got the extra plus sign for some reason. Okay, so now we've got three adjectives being chosen in the final stanza. So let's see what happens if we run this again. This is just to say, I have eaten the eggs that were in the entrance and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were necessary, so deep and so numerous. I really like that poem, actually, that, that new poem that I just generated. It, I to it totally makes sense, actually. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, I'm impressed with that, but also it's just random choice, right? And it leads us there. Uh, yeah, I almost really like that one. I, almost, I kind of want to keep this, this particular output. Um, and this is what you do as a, as a poet working with digital stuff. Ultimately, you're the one who decides which one to copy and paste and tell people about. You're the publisher, essentially. You're the writer. So if you make if your poem generates if your your po program generates bad poetry, you don't have to tell anybody about it. Ultimately, you're the your poetic sense is what drives which ones you you take with you and which ones you um, share with people, right? I've eaten the numbers that were in the base. Uh, forgive me, they were rich, so greenish, and so early. Hmm. All right, uh, so uh, hopefully you see how to do this. You can change any of these words out. It doesn't have to be at the end of a line, by the way. You could do it at the beginning. Uh, let's see, or we could just do, hmm. what could we do? You know, actually, while we do this, you're noticing how the 
significant and specific parts of each line for, for Williams happen at the end of each line. So breakfast, probably me, forgive me, All right? It's interesting. I never noticed that before. I have eaten. So these line breaks aren't just random for him or arbitrary. It seems like each line ends appropriately or ends with some point of emphasis, right? If we really wanted to close read this. Uh, yeah, okay, well, just the thing I wanted you to see, and I don't know how to make this um, actually sound good because of how Williams has constructed it, but if you wanted to put a noun somewhere else, you could do that at the beginning of the line, just know, or in the middle. Uh, let's just try this. This is going to sound awkward, but uh, let's put this in the middle of this line. Let's put a an adjective just to show you the idea. Um, and to show you that, what you have to do is, this is a a word that will be supplied by the random function, and so it needs to stand on its own. But things that I want to be printed just as text have to be strings, and strings have to be set apart by quote marks, and you have to join a programmatic bit with a string bit by using the plus sign for concatenation. That's what's happening here. So this is going to sound weird, but this is just to say I've eaten the notes that young were in the corporation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make sense, but you see the point there that that's how you can stick things, something in the middle of the line, right? You can do that at the beginning or the end or the middle. And honestly, I think this is pretty good. I think this is probably a good place to leave this off. So that was me generating poetry using a, a, an existing poem as a template, finding out which parts of speech I could replace it with, and then uh, going from there. Uh, let's see, did I need to show you anything else? Oh, actually, yeah, let me show you one more thing, um, because I, if you are in my class, I would like for you to, you know, you can certainly do this, or you can do uh, something slightly different. Let me switch back. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple more kind of examples like this one, and, oh, man, I've been going for too long. I need to wrap it up. I will. I promise. Okay, so the thing that I, I wanted to show you is that in figuring out, like, where to put things, uh, I think it's useful to take a look at the poem blob, right? So let's do this right here. Um, so the poem, I blobified that to begin with so that I could show you the tags list from that. And that's how you know what to put where. So if you're not even sure what some of these mean, you could see like plums is NNS. That's how I knew to put that there. Uh, I is a pronoun, personal pronoun. Uh, so that's, um, that's how you know the codes, right? So if you have a poem that, that exists, you run it through the blobifier to see what each word is tagged as, and then you use that tag down here when you build the lists, and then that gives you what the inappropriate thing to replace it for. Um, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so I really am going to wrap it up here. Um, that was interesting. It took a long, little bit longer than I thought, but I'm pretty pleased with the result. Hopefully that helped you as well. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good day.